Right, all right, all right. Double boost. Welcome back, everybody. Did I catch mm -hmm. you guys talking again in the middle of? We're talking about the new train, maybe. Yeah. Talking about the new train. Yes, the new train. Pretty exciting times. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing how that plays out. Holy hell, yeah! I think it's gorgeous. At least just from like the the graphics and the way that it looks right now, it's it, a thing of beauty. I think it does look extremely pretty. I am worried about the amount of clutter that seems to be going on, but I always am. Um, nah. I, I'm one of those people that would almost prefer if all walls were like some shade of gray that was pretty light. Uh, well, so, um, I think we're yeah we're brothers in arms in this one, <laughs> Anders. Yeah, no but man. I, well, I appreciate the fact that that can't be the case. So um, I I I, I really like the visuals of it. I think it's cool, but um, I, oh. just not too much. What do you think about? I mean, the thing is, like, clutter. Okay, like with the with the art form and all that, but everything is very light to me. Like on my monitor, yeah. everything looks like it's in a gray shade, and so That's models good. just like pop. They just stand no. out, right? Like everywhere you look, all these dark corners that used to be on the old train are gone. Now you can really just spot people. It feels instantly. No, it's good. I mean, I agree. It is a lot lighter. It's not like a dark map. I just worry sometimes about you know a model standing up next to a texture that that makes the model sort of harder to spot. I don't like stuff like that. Um, mm -hmm. Before we get into the second map here, because uh, we do actually have nine people on, and it is cash. Just in case anyone doesn't know, Penta took the first map. So, um, but now Epsilon, confident, I'm sure that in their own map choice, which is going to be cash here. You are watching the ESL Pro League, and um, I'm Anders, of course. Seminar is on the other camera. Vendetta not on the camera currently. We'll figure out a way to sort that out in the future. Um, but yes, he's also here. Of course, we usually we're on Room on Fire. Now we're on loan to ESL and doing uh, some really cool stuff here in the month of December. So we are enjoying it. But I do have an important topic to bring up before we get into it, which is that uh, yesterday I was watching I Buy Power. I think it was playing. Who were they playing? Why did I forget that all of a sudden? Um, hmm. It wasn't Elevate. Elevate. Was it? it was. Was Elevate. it Elevate? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And it was on the Face It stream. And James from the Face It stream, he had brought props into the stream. He actually brought a flip knife comb. So it was like a comb. He doesn't have hair, which made it all the more weird. But I saw, <laughs> I, I could read between the lines which James was trying to do there. So I thought I'm gonna get some props of my own because I, I, can, I can smell a challenge when I see one. And my prop are these glasses right here. So James, it's up to you to come up with something better now. The, the gauntlet has been thrown. We're going to head into the game to see what's going on. We'll be Penta and Epsilon, and welcome to the show. So what do you guys think? Cash, who's going to win it? I'm actually kind of curious. What kind of glasses are you wearing right now, man? Yeah. You can't see it. Like, <laughs> oh, you're, there, oh, you're, there you're, you're making a big deal out of this, but I can't see a damn thing. What are yeah, you Yeah, I'm watching it on stream right now. Put some Holy Ray-Bans on or what? Oh, they, those are Ray-Bans King Deluxe Super version. Holy hell. Yeah. They are... Uh, where did you find those? Um, I was in the store, and uh, and I just saw them, and I thought, uh, you know... Keyword, what what kind of store was that? It's one of those stores. I'm sure you have them in, in most of Scandinavia. It's like a, a 10 krona store, so everything is, like, really cheap. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Like, you can't buy anything really remotely expensive in there, and it's all kind of junk, but I thought that Wait, was, Are uh, you saying those glasses are junk? No, I mean, this is, like, the one exception, obviously. Yeah, of um, course. These are valuable. They're actually made out of real gold. I don't know if that was visible on the stream, but um, <laughs> it's, they're kind of heavy. Um, so yes, um, that little thing aside, we are going to be uh, moving into it, and um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Epsilon, we're going to have a knife to start it off with. They did choose this map. Uh, Vendetta, do you have a reading on how good Penta might be on, on cash? Or I'm Epsilon, sure for that matter? Well, Epsilon, we know, are pretty alright at cash. They took NIP to overtime during Case King. So, they definitely know how to play the map. Uh, although, that happened while Scrim was dropping something close to 40 bombs. So, that yeah. might have had something to do with it. Penta, on the other hand, they played uh, cash at Dreamhack. And there was actually a few videos of them doing very cool stuff. Uh, which you don't see a lot of. Yeah, man. Days, which is like the running towers to get people into boost spots. Quicker. Oh man, I was I was like nearly falling out of my chair when I saw that. When they actually did that from T spawn into mid boost, I was just all over it. That yeah, was sick. Yeah, they do the same thing with the well, you know, now that we're on the A site knifing it out, the yeah, yeah, yeah the, the boost, boost spot there in the corner. Yeah, you can but, jump up onto the uh, railing that's up here onto the red container and then actually jump all the way over to the boost stop without getting into these weird barrels that are over here, which becomes really complicated. So um yeah, I agree. That was that was some of the sexiest uh, you know boosting we've ever seen for, for a really long time um so yeah i i hope i hope that penta is going to show us that as well because that's good fun yeah and it's cool to see because that's something i think most teams don't think of 
And, uh, but it's effective. It's actually useful. So well, it's it just could, tough in a, in a scenario, really like when you're do. on land, right? You know, and you got the nerves and whatever, you know, are you actually going to go for that? That was really what was cool about it is the fact that I'm sure teams could do it, but these guys were doing it in a major. It's just like, okay then, Penta. Right. It was really ever, cool. Have you guys ever tried to do jump boosts? Because they look oh, really yeah. easy, and they're definitely not. You should have seen how Source was before they added Z block or Z block. Yeah. It was basically just like people jump boosting each other. So you could get from uh, the new, uh, the T roof on new to CT spawn in about three and a half seconds. <laughs> That's kind of how Source worked for a period. It was absolutely insane. Yeah, especially if you were like once or something, I'm getting guessing just a bunny. Yeah, jumping. once would one D one or two people like while flying around the map. So <laughs> I've been victim of those far too many times. All right, well enough of the bad old days. It's Epsilon and Penta. Best of uh, three. We're now on the second map here, and it's the ESL Pro League. So welcome to the show. Um, I'm excited. I want to go to a third map because. Um, yeah, it's actually kind of fun watching these two teams play it out. But GMX, he's going to be the first one potentially to see a target. He does just spot a couple of people and it will fall back to a safer position. Crystal getting closer, but yeah, he's going to make his way into check it through the smoke. So a lot of map control and maybe a lot of distraction going on over here while the bomb is making its way somewhere else. And there are so much movement. Out. Yeah, and Bob did get spotted out by FXL though, so I guess that's the saving grace to his death. But Uzi's going to have a really hard time. What? Or not. <laughs> Or not, he just picks up those two headshots. That makes all the difference. Even if he goes down and he does, that is still immense from Uzi. That's such a big double kill. Completely round changing and maybe even saving uh, the beginning of this half here for uh, for Epsilon. The bomb will go down and Spitty and uh, and Dennis are still alive. But that is such a huge kill. Now Dennis with the one return there. Flanking around, they almost line up. Dennis rushing in, but he's not doing the damage just yet. It's only Biggie left. He's in a one on two and time is ticking away. He will go down to Dennis who picks up a triple. So in spite of everything that Uzi just did, it wasn't enough. What a, what a loss for Epsilon. That looked like that was gonna win them the round. Yeah, it looked. It went from being a almost impossible situation for Epsilon to to get back into it. Then Uzi drops those two headshots, and all of a sudden you're thinking, "Well, how are Penta going to handle this?" And then in the end, I'm not really sure how they didn't manage to take down Dennis there, because he was running around, you know, having to reload, caught in a corner, all that horrible stuff for so long. And now we see Penta just quickly making work over that A take. And this should be wearing something miraculous from Epsilon another round for Penta. I think that's pretty clear at this point now. Scream is trying to put up a bit of a fight from CT Spawn. But so far, it's been pretty good control here. Robson just needs to be very careful at this point not to show himself with one HP, right? So he's he's the danger guy here. They're going to want to try and rotate him out fast. But look at Foxio's position already. He's looking to box them in. Already waiting in T-Spawn. So as soon as they try and push out from A main, Foxio's going to have a bit of a peekaboo moment here. He's going to be able to catch Spitty, but he looks away at the last possible moment there. What is going on? Okay then, Foxio, he's going to make it out, but he doesn't actually manage to do any damage at all. The timing was unreal, even the second time when he just unscopes as they come around the corner. Just not, not his day or not his uh, round there, Foxio, unfortunately there. Third round coming up, and... um. I th it feels to me like we are seeing significantly less CZ75 action, and I think we had one CZ over by the forklift this time around, and it didn't seem to do any damage. It just kind of went down a little bit too quick. Yeah, I think more and more people are just going to go back to the, the pistols that we were used to prior to the CZ era. Because it's not like the pistols that are left in CSGO are bad by any means. The P250 and the 5.7 are still insanely strong. And on the T side you have the Tech 9 as well, so... Lots of stuff to work with. Variety, I think. Spice of life, all that. Oh. GMX. It looked like he had the opening then, but um, not quite good enough. Screen, of course, landing uh, multiple headshots. Hit one on Crystal as well. So now Penta have to rethink this idea about challenging too much until more time has passed so they can make sure their bomb at least goes off. Don't want to lose a round like this. That would be uh, silly, if nothing else. And they will take down Uzi as well. Scream 
finally taking down Crystal. And Biggie could come up from behind. Oh, he's actually fallen away. Looked like that was such a big opening. Biggie's, I think, is going to be a little bit too late to the party. They're getting a lot of kills here, which is still good. Biggie's going to go down and scream. Landed another shot on Robson to almost bring him down. So it's an expensive round from Penta. But they'll win it, and they're on the less favored side. So I think they're going to be just fine with it. And Fox has got to be kicking himself right now. He's a hundred dollar. He was a hundred dollar short of getting an AWP glass cannon there. I think that was the big game plan for him. So now he's going to have to opt for that M4. The M4A1 now also due to the update that happened earlier today, thirty one hundred dollars now. So it costs as much as an M4A4. So it's really interesting actually to see, despite the price change, Epsilon Esports still running full silencers. Yeah. I mean, no, because is. they did fix the smoke as well, actually. Oh, yeah, you're right. You can't see through the same way. Oh, grenade out here from Crystal. It's going to bounce back. And Foxio is dead. So it is a return kill, but Epsilon are still doing a, a lot better right now. It's Crystal and Spitty who are left, and the Frenchmen have sort of shut down the German team across the board, which is what they need to do. This is their map to win. Crystal goes down as well. Biggie almost sticking that uh, rifle into his eye as he uh, pulled the trigger, and now Spitty's alone. It just seems like Penta were really trying to get mid control that time around and they ran right into the blender pretty much. So this map, however, is much more of a CT side, like established CT side map. So Penta, they get the three rounds to start, so they're already going to be feeling pretty good about that. Ben, how many rounds do you think they need to consider it a one half for Penta? I'd say six or seven rounds is more than enough, really. I think they can be okay with five as well, as long as they don't go on a... You know, as long as they don't get off to a horrible start on their CT side. So if they can get to six, which is not far off already, they should be really happy about the first half. Or they should be perfectly fine with their first half, I guess. Ah, three to one. They do have the orb on crystal and a little bit of wall banging trying to be attempted here. Or trying to be attempted? Being attempted in the middle. And um, I guess we'll see Epsilon. Five rounds for Penta might be enough. I, I think Epsilon just want to have like one of those overpowering performances where, where everything just works smoothly and it's all beautiful and, and it works out really well and they can go onto the final map and, and get a good chance to play here. I think they, they I think Epsilon are gunning to like get, you know, eleven or twelve rounds or something on this first half, which could be done. Certainly, certainly. I mean, they're off to a pretty good start already, man. And they just managed to shut down Penta in their first buy round. It's looking pretty solid so far as well. Biggie's going to be able to spot somebody out in A-Main there. That's Crystal taking a bit of a fight with him. But it looks like Penta are going to wind up on this A-Site. The bomb is gathered here. Three guys in A-Main looking to just start pushing through. A grenade landed dead on Crystal, just uh, flying through the smoke as well. Uzi almost looking the wrong way, but he will pick up the kill anyway. Biggie in the background too, and Fox are here. Actually, just an almost perfect defense coming out right now from the Epsilon team. Penta walked into a bomb site where there were already three people holding, and they just did not have the equipment to deal with it. So, Ven, was there anything that Penta could have done to realize that there were going to be that many people here? Not necessarily know that there would be that many, but they <laughs> they were actually at a time being in that round. Very close to the A-bomb site with only one member on the A-bomb site for Epsilon. So the fact that they've spent so much time, which worked out really well for them on Dust 2, that actually came back to backfire on them uh, here on Cash. Oh, time? No. It looked like if they had kept rushing then, that would have worked out really well for them. That B rush can be so lethal if you just do it quick enough. But um, the fact that they slowed down also, I mean, GMX managed to put out that, uh, that pop flash and it all sort of ground to a halt. That was a bit of a shame. Yeah, half-hearted eco rushes rarely go well for your team. So it's surprising to see that Penta didn't really commit to to going towards B because, as Sam said, they could the B rushes are lethal on this map, and if they actually just follow through, they could have very easily picked up GMX and in in, uh, in, no, in, in checker. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I was expecting the Rec Nine basically because he was he was looked like he was about to just wrap around that corner and get right up in GMX's face, and the rest of his team he was kind of just like. You know, basically... GMX was running out of bullets as well. Yeah, you're going in, and then you just die. And then you're like, guys, team, where are you? And nobody's there to be found. They fed you to the wolves. I mean, that's one of the advantages if you end up rushing someone who is holding one of those M4A1s, is that if you're enough people, it's actually really hard to kill four or five people with the, with the M4A1 unless you're handing some, some excellent headshots. So, um... 
yeah, if you catch them reloading, maybe that's the chance to to get some some retaliation going on. We're into the seventh round, and Epsilon have won three three in a row here. Um, some pretty convincing rounds as well. And now they just need to keep that up. Really can't let Penta back in the game at any point here. Oh, this is going to be it. Nice boost and nice shot by GMX. But Crystal's there, and Felix is there to support as well for mid. So they are going to be able to turn things around for themselves here. Nicely done by Penta. They're going to try and catch Uzi. He's falling back. Fox Show is far away into the uh, B bomb site. Spray goes through. He hits the shot. And now he's got the C set out. And it's the nerf version. He's still going to pick up a kill. And now it's a two on one. Fox Show is solo on health. And he doesn't get the flick home. Felix will pick it up with a triple. Crystal with a double. And Depenta won that mid engagement in spite of the fact that it wasn't looking too hot early on. They actually brought it back. Yeah, uh, that was. The exact same round they did the first uh, first real buy round for both teams, and it definitely didn't work out that time. Uh, not really sure what the difference was. I guess you could put it down to them actually hitting their shots, but they didn't take nearly as much nade damage as they did in the first attempt. So that's uh, it's good for Penta, but they need to get off to a better start if they want to continue to keep this momentum here. But FXO gets off to a good start picking up Dennis. GMX is waiting in the vents. Almost caught with a grenade out, but he's going to be able to force Felix back. I do love the fact that Crystal is over here by the uh, by the ladder, just waiting at the A bomb site. They're going to fall back to B. If they get the entry frag in B and Crystal can catch them rotating out of A, that is going to be such a powerful tool. But if they don't never get the entry at B, it's just not going to be the same, is it? No, it isn't. And GMX is in a really solid position to actually... He might have to sacrifice Scream, but... He's in a position to create havoc with the German team as they try to take that B bomb site. Well, look yeah, at and the they aren't screen. checking. He's going to flash him in. GMX is going to peek behind the flash, and that's a free kill on Felix. Follow up as well. You're absolutely right, Vendetta. That was GMX's position, just working wonders. Crystal goes down, and it nothing comes on that round from from Penta. I definitely understood what they were trying to do. Uh, the other option would have been to use Crystal's position to to make it an A flank so that the rest of them sort of push in through main and squeak and then maybe Crystal, you know, sort of backstabs them just as it happens. It, it's hard for them to know. They don't have the same overview that we do, but that um, that worked out really well for Epsilon. Yeah. In, in a situation like that, Propenta, you can pretty much do two things, and that's either have Crystal lead the charge and try to get a rotation over towards the A bomb site, but that, you know, he's actually required to get a frag or two for that to happen. And if he doesn't, then it kind of just gives up everything that Penta have been setting up. So you can't really fault Penta for trying to have Crystal there as the kind of fail safe to pick up rotations. This is quickly shaping into a slaughter. So that looked like Penta pretty much wanted to get the round done and Epsilon were happy to do so as well. You know, not waste any time, not really, you know, kick anything around, no plant for Penta. So a very, very quick round there. Not a whole lot happening. Yeah, and with Penta not being able to get the bomb plant, they're actually not going to have the opportunity to get an op on Dennis or Crystal. So uh -huh. we'll see have to, how they opt to actually go about this. I, I'm At that point, I wonder if a uh, double eco shouldn't have been the right call to make. Yeah, especially with Robson being forced to actually get, go for a ZZ. And I'm surprised he's actually going for a ZZ instead of a 5.7 or a P250. When he has to force it like this. Ooh, look at this boost. Scream being counter boosted in the middle. And Dennis is going to walk in with a knife out. He goes down. And that's essentially a free kill coming in from Epsilon. Perfect timing once again here for the French team. So maybe they should have forced. But either way, they definitely need to get the kills here. And they're just not getting them. Uzi's going to pick up a kill on Robson as well. Penta just uh, losing teammates left and right. And I don't think it's going to work out. They try for the bomb plant there on Spitty, but eventually they all get mowed down. And look at the money on, e on Epsilon here. This is exactly what they needed. This is when it starts to get out of control, basically. Two rounds separating them now, just four rounds left in the half. Well, five, including this one. And this is where it starts to get really dangerous because Epsilon now, they have money to buy three rounds running pretty much. So now Penta, I've got to be wondering, now Penta, I'm wondering if they're actually kicking themselves for not going to the double eco, not getting full gear, full nades, everything to be able to take a real crack at Penta rather than just getting picked off left and right. Yeah, and in addition to that, now they have to make the horrible decision whether or not they want to do a double eco now to get an off to try to counter what Foxo is doing to their team. I like that bait with the door though. Uzi's going to be able to make it back around on the site, however, and the rest of the teammates. For Penta are pretty much going to be uh, killed mercilessly. There's not a whole lot of hope. 
Yeah. I think that's three rounds in a row without a single kill for Penta. Mm, the scoreboard kind of tells a similar story. The two top fraggers on Epsilon have twice the amount of kills that uh, that Speedy does. Top fragging with six currently on Penta's side. So it is looking a little bit tricky here for the, uh, for the German team. But then again, we did say they maybe only need about five rounds on this first half. And right now they're at four. So a little bit of luck and a little bit of flick shooting coming in from Crystal. That might be the opening. That's Biggie going down, who's been getting a lot of uh, anti-eco frags in the last couple of rounds. So this round, he's going to get shut down. DMX is pushed up in a curious position with the orb. How is this going to work out? If he kills someone here, they could just rush him down. Nicely done. Lands oh. the flick, and he gets out with one HP. The luck on this guy. Almost unreal. Do they have a grenade left? They do actually have one on Robson. He can't know that GMX has fallen back to this position, but you can definitely grenade this one. That would be hilarious. But Penta giving up a little bit and actually going back towards the middle instead. If they go for the A-bomb site, I mean, then they might run into Foxio again. Yeah, they very well might, but I wouldn't be too surprised if we saw them actually going through events here. Just trying to get a different angle on B here. And you can see Spitty is mm. moving back towards the B-bomb site as well. So this is going to be a beast bet, and Crystal is probably going to do something similar to what we saw him attempt. A couple of rounds ago. Scream. Covering too many angles. Flashbang goes in. Are they coming through the vents? Finally, they do. GMX holding the back of sight with just a very, very little health here. He's going to peek up. Take the one kill. Should be going down. And there it finally is in the middle. Crystal could have got caught as well. It's still not a 100% win here for Penta. They're in a two on three. And there's the spray from Uzi. Connects right through. And that's going to be Crystal going down. So now it's a real two on two. Retake happening here. Felix and Speedy. They have a good crossfire. Foxio, though, is going to break it. And now it's a one on two. Felix hiding in the corner. He wants to fight his way out, but I think they know where he is. Foxio goes down. He keeps spraying, and it's going to be Uzi with a double kill and the round one for Epsilon. Well played. Really well played. A crucial round win there for Epsilon. Managing to hang on just barely. They're going to have enough time for the defuse thanks to the kit on Uzi. But that's that's a really solid performance once again from GMX. I mean, uh, towards the end of Dust 2, he started waking up. And again, this time around, I mean, he's sitting at 10 and 5 right now. GMX is having an impact for his team when they need him. Because Epsilon, if they can walk out of this half with 11 rounds on the board, that would be a 6 score line to have going into the, the second half. So this was, a, this was a crucial round to win. Definitely was. Luckily for Penta, though, they did get the plant down, so you can see Crystal's kitted out with an AWP once more. And when they've had AWPs up, they have been able to do more damage to Epsilon, but again, Dennis gets picked off by Foxio, and that's been happening happening quite a lot. Oh, That's a dirty shot through the smoke in the middle there. Biggie picking up that one. It seems like when we were watching Dust, Penta did get a lot of entry frags, and on this map, it it's almost always Penta, uh, oh sorry, Epsilon picking up and Penta something having to uh, to fight from behind instead. It feels like they're going to go back to B again though. I'm wondering if for these teams it's really, you know, okay, we got our first round picks, like the maps that we wanted to play, because this is Epsilon's map, right? And you're seeing a clear difference, I think, between Dust2 and Cash. Epsilon seem to be waking up. At GMX just holding down this B site solid, missing a couple of flicks, but he will get the final one there, the headshot on Robson. And again, Epsilon just holding solid. Yeah, and they were also flanking out. Biggie was coming in from the middle. Uzi was coming in for the vent. So even if GMX and uh, and whoever else was holding in that bomb site had gone down, the backstab would have been there so quickly that eventually Pent has sort of got uh, got boxed in in this uh, this you know square right here and didn't really work out so well. So we're into the 14th round and they might never get that uh, that fifth round that they were looking for because they are low on money and just have lost a lot of rounds in a row. Yeah, they're not looking too hot right now, that's for sure. Oh, but it's going to be a very quick play here onto the A side. It looks like Penta are actually going to get the trade. Crystal manages to recover that M4A1, but they aren't letting up the pressure here. Uzi just rushing out onto the site, trying to stop this plant from going down, and he's going to do it. Uzi with the double kill. Wow. That, actually, I think that was a cool gamble by Penta. Uh, just putting that much speed on and they caught Epsilon in a position where they had a lot of mid-presence and only one person in A and that person died only getting the one frag. So that's a setup for a really good round. It just uh, a great retake coming out from Epsilon right afterwards. Yeah, Uzi, you know, setting speed as well towards the bomb site didn't really go that well for Penta. But this that's the opening that Penta's had for quite a few rounds actually as GMX picks up the first frag on Speedy. 
And Foxio follows up on Dennis for the nth time this <laughs> this game. Yeah. Foxio really coming into his own right here, but he's going to get chased down. Finally, they'll be able to drop that, uh, that powerhouse. He is currently at 15 kills, tied again with Biggie. Biggie's walking out into the middle. Could have got himself killed there. Bit of a dangerous peek. He's going to fall back to the truck, and it feels like Penta still are just kind of weirdly boxed in here. They are going to get in, and Uzi will pick up the other kill on Robson there. So now it's all on Felix. One on four for the 15th round. They lined up for him, but it wasn't enough. And it's a team ace for Epsilon. Each individual member picking up a kill to make it 11-4 for the first half. Pretty convincing. Yeah, a bit of a rough start there. I think at one point it was 3-4 to four in favor of Penta. And after that, Epsilon never looked back. And they strung around three rounds with Penta not being able to get a single kill as well. That more or less set them up perfectly for the remainder of the first half. Because the, the exciting thing now is to see if Penta are able to string around a similar run to Epsilon in their half. Because, well, as you said, it's a CT side of map, so they definitely have the opportunity to do so. But I think they need to win the pistol round. Yeah, I think winning the pistol round pretty much goes without saying. They can't allow Epsilon to get up to 14 rounds at the beginning of the second half. That gives them way too little room to work with. So Penta, no pressure, guys. But... If you want to have a big impact here and pick this uh, series up 2-0, you have to win this pistol. This is pretty much it. They got quite a few nades as well. Only one kit this time picked up from Penta, however, oh. so it's all going to be about this. They tried the, the running boost. I didn't catch it, and they also failed it, but um, they, they wanted to attempt it. I'll, I'll be more careful to see if we can spot it. Now they really do need to win the pistol round, because we need to see them actually doing that boost a couple of times. I like Spitter's position here. This is really cool. Putting shots through, but not hitting. Now they're all rushing in here. Quick early trade. Spitty will get the kill. Usi with another one. It's down into a three on three, but Spitty is just darting back and forth through the smoke. They have a huge health advantage here on the Penta side. They should be able to win this round, even with the smokes down and everything else. Bomb being attempted here. Oh, Scream will hit the one shot. Now it's up to Felix. He's very low on health now as well. He's not going to have much hope here, basically. Walking in, Scream is going to be able to cover Uzi's back. Felix trying to wrap around the corner. Scream with the pre-fire, not going to hit the shot. And he is looking to like it's going to be right on the edge here. I mean, Felix could potentially wrap around. But there's two members for Uzi. He's going to take out the first man. Scream is now gone. Uzi's waiting, but he's playing it perfectly, using the game sound to stay on the wrong side of the container. He finally takes the fight when there's just not going to be enough time. Felix is going to be able to pick up that kit, but he's just not going to have the time for the defuse here. Oh, one of those situations where you really almost have to rely on your opponents making a mistake, and Epsilon just didn't really. So um, there it is, man. Epsilon picking up the pistol on the second half and making life now very tough for uh, for Penta. It's a shame that Penta aren't able to pick up that pistol round because that's the round they should have had. And we kind of saw two polar opposites of how to play a retic situation. You saw Dennis going out with all that aggression all by himself and that didn't work out. And Felix ended up being too passive and that won't be too. And now they're rushing into the bomb site. Merciless Robson in the background wanted to hit some of those scout shots and he wasn't successful and they are definitely not going to win this round. Epsilon not playing the slow game, not allowing themselves to be challenged by the scouts. So range just going all in and rushing that bomb site and that worked perfectly. Yeah, no complaints really. This is just confidence now from Epsilon. They know they got the hard job done picking up the pistol. That was pretty much it. Now they can just kind of bully Penta. And all the damage, I mean, if they can could, like decisively take these following rounds away from Penta, that's going to put Penta in a very bad spot going into a crucial, well, basically the last round when Epsilon are on 14 and Penta are going to finally get rifles. It's going to be really tough for Penta to come back and maintain the mental game. I mean, you may you may go into these thinking like, okay, it's just eco rounds that we're losing. But if you get beat up in those eco rounds, if you can't even get kills in those eco rounds, it's still pretty hard to come back from. Yeah, it could be really annoying though. Good flashbang there and Speedy with the follow up as well. Both Uzi and GMX have gone down and this is not what they had planned for themselves here on the Epsilon side. That's going to be so painful. The only thing that could work out right now is if Penta somehow over-rotate, which you can tell they kind of have here at the B-bomb site. If the rest of Epsilon fall back to A, there might be an opening, but they're going to keep going, and they are losing even more health. Does Felix get the right timing? Scream is there as well. They're going to go for a counter boost, trying to boost Scream out at the mid. Two guys here, however, in vents. This could be big. 
Get Robson, they have no idea. He hits the headshot on Scream as well, but Scream somehow whips around and gets the kill with two HP left. There's a Pro 90 picked up on Spitty now, though. He's got something to use, but he gets caught by Biggie in mid. And just like that, Epsilon have managed to way back out of that trap and work their way to the A site. What a round this has turned into. Crystal coming through. He almost takes down Fox Shield, but then he gets shot in the face in return from Biggie. So now Dennis has to try and clutch it. He has to get there quickly. He doesn't have a kit, pick up a double kill and make it a quad in total for himself and then also defuse the bomb. It's a pretty tough uh, task ahead of him. This isn't looking too hot. He's looking the wrong way as well. Rounds that corner takes way too much damage and Biggie's going to be able to pick him off with ease. He even gifts him an AK, so Biggie's going to be pleased about that. But Did did they play <clears> too <throat> passively in that uh, two on uh, four and three there? When they were in, they were two people in vents and two people inside the bomb side. It seemed like they could have almost just crushed uh, the remaining Epsilon players there. I think actually they did the opposite. They played too aggressively. Oh. Uh, I think it's okay for you to give away the first guy in vents there to scream, although it's somewhat reckless. But for Robson to go in there and not pick up the kill on scream and die, that throws it all away. Yeah. So Scream living with 3 HP, man. 3 yeah. HP, like, yeah. That's how close that round was. <laughs> you can't let that happen simply if you're Penta. So if you're gonna go in that duel, you have to be 100% sure that there's gonna be no way of you not coming away with a kill. And if you can, if you can do that, if you can guarantee that, which is, you know, about as impossible, you know, it's close to impossible, then don't do it. Just hold them off and play play for time oh scream showing us why they are about to win this map some great headshots raining in there dennis caught on the wrong side of the smoke out of the bomb site here and they are just gonna basically uh, waft him away with a couple of ak's bomb will go down here and it's a two on four it's the 14th round very very close to being a completely dominant performance here from epsilon now this is just really impressive but it's also uh, it gives you hope for Epsilon actually going into the last map of this series because Penta struggled on Dust2 to take Epsilon out. Epsilon don't feel like they're struggling at all to deal with Penta on cash. So you have to wonder just, I mean, that's the thing. Penta have clearly put some time into cash because they've got the crazy boosts. They've got the skills, right? Now they're not getting the kills, man. That's a problem. If you put the work into the map, you need to be getting more than four rounds on your CT side. Yeah, I think it's, I mean, I think the fact is that it could have been like a 9-6 finish for for Penta on the first half. And if they then also win the pistol on the on the follow-up, which they almost did, to be to be fair. I mean, I think, I'm not I'm not saying Epsilon haven't done well, but I think the score is deceptively one-sided right now. There are, there could have been a few rounds that could have made this uh, much closer than it, than, it, uh, than it is now anyway. So, um, I don't know. And I think once, once you miss all those rounds, which they essentially have, you'll probably start tilting just a little bit, right? Start to feel oh, like yeah. it's, not, it's it's too much to handle. Everything feels kind of hopeless. <laughs> Banning all hope, you scurvy dogs. <laughs> yeah, it's not a great feeling going into the third map on for sure, especially because they, they it has been a really dominant performance by Epsilon. They haven't lost a single round since it was three to four in favor yeah. of Penta. So Penta have more or less been slaughtered most of those rounds, and they've had a couple of instances where they've had been close, but. For the most part, nothing special. Look at some really good decision making coming out here from the from the terror side. They actually force, or they sort of make enough noise that Penta rotate a bunch of people over. Then they start bringing the bomb back, and they are being a little bit slow about it. But uh, if they move right about now, they might be able to push in at the pretty optimal timing. Crystal has a scout here, not an AWP. And look at where Scream is. If he gets one kill, that might just uh, he's still just Scream alone is keeping everyone in this bomb site almost. Robson goes down, Crystal misses the shot, and now that's going to be it. I don't think Epsilon are going to let go of this uh, round here, and they won't. That's going to be an impressive map victory. The last one also being, at least so far, a flawless one. Only Biggie going down here, 16 to 4. Well played. Uh, really well played. Just flat out dawn, it's coming out from Epsilon. That's, that's going to take us to a third map, though, guys. That's going to make it interesting here, because so far, at least on the first night of, uh, of this tournament, we've had nothing but two O's. So... First uh, best of three that goes the distance. Thank you very much, Epsilon and Penta.
yeah, really, really exciting stuff. And um, yeah, first half Epsilon seemed to have been, uh, at least to, according to the heat map, pretty much preferring the uh, the A bomb site Penta did, sorry. And uh, when they were on the terrorist side, second half wasn't as long, obviously. So kind of hard to say uh, much about that. Scream did up, end up with a 72% headshot ratio. So doing a, a pretty good job, you know. By his standard, maybe not too impressive, but, uh, you know, you can kind of compare with everyone else. And I guess the closest is Felix at about 61, so still a, a fair gap between the two. So that that's that's it. We're going to go to a third map, so you guys have to stay tuned. Again, we will have a uh, short commercial break before we actually uh, get into that. But um, as soon as we're ready, then uh, then we'll, we'll be right back. About five minutes, so stay tuned, and, uh, and we'll be right here. <laughs> 